Um, this video I'll start talking about uh, MCQs on diabetes mellitus and this is a part one and uh, uh, there will be a series of part two and three in future. So we'll start here by the first question as the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists recommends to consider combination therapy at which of the following um, HbA1c at diagnosis of diabetes type 2. A for 7%, B 7.5% or 8%, um, 8.5% or 9%. So the correct answer is B 7.5%. The next question here about American Diabetes Association recommend to start combination therapy at which of the following HbA1c? Is it 7.5 or 8 or 9 or 9.5 percent um, or none of, of the above? Actually the answer is E, none of the above. And as the latest guideline did not do any recommendation, they just leave it to us to, de to determine how uh, I want to do it uh, depending on the individualization of the age patient. Here we go with our uh, next question. Which one of the following medication combinations should not be used? Uh, A, DBB4 inhibitors and SGLT two inhibitors, B, GLB-1 analog um, with SGLT2 inhibitors, C, DBB-4 inhibitors and metformin, D, DBB-4 inhibitors and GLB-1 analog, E, SGLT2 inhibitors and metformin. So I'll give you some seconds to think. So the answer is D. So because both work in the same molecules, so no additive benefits in using both. Next question, which of the following medication have strongest protective effect against nephropathy? A metformin and DBB4 inhibitors or GLB1 analog or SGLT2 inhibitors or sulfonyl urea? So the correct answer is D, SGL2, SGLT2 inhibitors. They actually normalizing initial increase in glomerular infiltration ratio uh, that uh, we see early in the pathogenesis in type uh, 2 diabetes and our only medication that they actually normalize this. So earlier you use uh, SGLT2 inhibitors, the better it's, uh, it's more benefit to the patients. However, you can use it later when there is a degree of kidney failure because it's slow the progression and only you cannot use with advanced kidney failures. Next question, which of the following medication is not associated with weight loss? ADBB4 inhibitors, BGLB1 analog, uh, C metformin, D RL stat, and E SGLT2 inhibitors. So the answer is A, DBB4 inhibitors, because they are uh, neutral. Next question: Which HbA1c would be a reasonable target for 50 years old patient with diabetes? Type 2 who is otherwise healthy and has no known complications. So A is 6.5 percent, B 7 percent, C 6 percent, or uh, 7.5 percent, or E, uh, which is 8 percent. So the answer is A. Um, the recommend 6.5 percent. 
So when you look at ADA guideline, they are moving to target less than 7%, but then has moved for last two to three years uh, to individualization of the glycemia target. So less than 7% will not be a good for everybody. Uh, but just for the patient, the question here, uh, but also you, you, te you take other risks associated with hypoglycemia, disease duration and life expectancy, important comorbidities, established vascular complication, patient preference, and resources and support system. Next question, which of the following medications should be the first line treatment for most patients with type 2 diabetes? Uh, SGLT2 inhibitors or DBB4 inhibitor or GLB1 analog or metformin or sulfonylurea. The correct answer is D, metformin. The ADA for many years uh, has recommended metformin as a first-line therapy. And uh, 2022, they, uh, they had just include metformin, but has been focused in, the to in talking um, about first-line therapy, depend on the comorbidities and treatment factor, cost, access, and etc. Next question, what's the main effect of metformin in the glycemic control? A increase in insulin secretion, B suppression of glucagon uh, secretion, or C suppression of the hepatic gluconeogenesis, and D increase the glucose uh, disposal in the fat, or A increase the glucose disposal in the muscle. So the correct answer is C, suppression of the hepatic gluconeogenesis. Next question, which of the following is contraindication for use of metformin? Uh, triglyceride of more than 1,000, or in this stage renal disease, or increase of AST and ALT to more than two times of normal level, or history of MI in the last six months, and or history of a stroke in the last six months. So the answer here is B, in the stage renal disease. As recommended, recommendation for use in renal impairment, assess renal function before initiation of metformin, and contraindication in patient with AGFR uh, less than 30 ml per minute. Next question, which of the following is not a goal for treatment of 50 years old patient with diabetes type 2 who is obese but otherwise healthy and has no known complications? So lost 5% uh, of body weight, uh, hemoglobin A1c less than 7% or more of safely possible. Uh, next blood pressure less than 140 over 90 millimeter mercury. Um, D for LDL of less than 100 milligram, uh, A for HDL more than 50. So the correct answer is E. Low levels of HDL cholesterol of it associated with elevated triglyceride levels are most prevalent pattern of dyslipidemia in individuals with type 2 diabetes. As a large trial, in patients with diabetes phenotype rate failed to reduce overall cardiovascular outcomes. Next question, what's the first change that can be detected in renal function of the patient uh, with diabetes uh, mellitus? An increase in GFR or macroalbuminuria, or increase in serum creatinine and or increase in blood urea nitrogen or decrease in GFR. So the correct answer is increase in GFR. So this picture which talk about natural history of diabetic nephropathy in type 1 diabetes but goes also in type 2 um, as well. If you see that uh, at the time of diagnosis the increase of GFR 
and increasing kidney size. Uh, this is because efferent arteriole that goes in nephron, they will vasodilate. And afferent arteriole, there is vasoconstriction led to increase in GFR. As the diabetes continue to progress, you can then think of microalbuminuria, which may be transient and then become persistent. Next question, which of the following tests are, is recommended as a screening for early diabetic nephropathy? 24 hours urine for albuminic secretion or direct measurement of GFR or albumin creatinine ratio or kidney ultrasound examination, e all of the above. So the correct answer is C, albumin creatinine ratio as recommended by ADA. Here is the screening recommendation, at least annual urinary albumin, spot urine albumin to creatinine ratio and estimated GFR rate should be assist in patients with type 1 diabetes with duration of, of more or equal to five years and all patients with type 2 diabetes regardless of the treatment. In patients with diabetes and urinary albumin more than or equal to 300 milligram per gram creatinine and or an estimated glomerular filtration rate 30 to 60 ml per minute it should be monitored twice annual to guide therapy. Next question, all of the following have been shown to diminish the risk of diabetic nephropathy except A, glycemia control, B, blood pressure control, or C, control of death lipidemia, uh, D, use of ACE inhibitors, E, use of ACE inhibitors, and R, combination. So the correct answer is E. Next question, which of the following medication showed uh, renal protection in excess of that seen with improved glycemic control? Uh, sulfonylurea or insulin or SGLT2 inhibitors or alpha glycosidase inhibitors or DBB4 inhibitors. So the answer is C, SGL2. Uh, inhibitors. Question, which of the following medications are associated with weight loss? A for SGL2 inhibitors, glycosidase inhibitors, metformin or sulfonylurea or DBB4 inhibitors. So the answer is A, SGLT2 inhibitors. So here we go for next question, which of the following is associated with the use of bioglutazone? Um, risk of hypoglycemia, decrease of the body weight, increase in bone density, or decrease risk of heart failure. So the answer is E, it increased the insulin sensitivity in the muscle and the fat. Question, which of the following medication has ability to suppress postprandial glucagon secretion, sulfonylurea or GLB-1 analogs or SGLT2 inhibitors or metformin or bioglutazone? So the answer is B, GLB-1 analogs. Next question, which of the following medications the safest to use in patients with newly diagnosed type 2 diabetes while in the hospital for cabbage surgery? Sulfonylurea or metformin or biglutazone or DBB4 inhibitors? The correct answer is DBB4 inhibitors. I will go for the next question and it will be the last question in this part one MCQs. Um, initial combination therapy for type 2 diabetes associated with all of the following except better initial HbA1c result, more sustainable glycemia control, improved adherence to treatment, 
or increased cost of the therapy or addressing multiple mechanisms of type 2 diabetes. So the answer here, all are right except C, improved adherence to treatment. Uh, why? Because the patient is newly diagnosed and um, usually the adherence will face tr trouble and problem with the adherence to treatment. Thank you so much.